Ravana Lexus. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? you very well. I'm okay, here. Madam President, uh, I'm glad to see you, glad to hear you. I'm concerned about the economic situation in Europe. It's, um, you know that as assistance yeah. to Ukraine depends on it. And some countries are already openly saying that internal problems are more important to them than uh, Ukraine. So I just would like to ask you how the things in Europe as a whole, how did the crisis hit? Uh, so what is your position? Where we have an issue is on inflation because of the bottlenecks that have survived the end of COVID. We are seeing prices that have initially gone up only in the area of energy and then gradually mm. through fertilizers in particular to food and now on a much broader basis. So the inflation that we had hoped would be transitory has continued much longer than thought and at a much higher level than expected. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, all central banks and the ECB is no exception, have to take measures in order to reduce inflation so that people do not suffer from high prices and we have a more stable uh, economy. As a result, we have started raising interest rates, which, you know, were negative, minus mm -hmm. 50 basis points uh, about a year ago, and which are now at uh, 2% for the most uh, frequently used uh, interest rates. So mm -hmm. we have growth that is low. We have prices mm -hmm. that are too high that we have to bring down. That's, that's the situation that we have at the moment. Why do you think um, uh, how Russia was able to overcome, overcome the sanctions policy? I'm told the sanctions are hitting the European economy and the euro, uh, I think, more than we expect, expected. And um, so are the sanctions working or is Europe uh, shooting itself in the foot? Russia's GDP has grown. It is uh, now the ninth in the world. How do you assess the policy of um, the Central Bank of Russia and uh, head of uh, Russia's um, uh, Central Bank, Elvira Nabiulina? They managed uh, to save the rubble. And why, how, why do you think so? I think Elvira, uh, whom I know well, uh, is a very good uh, Central Bank governor. She very quickly understood what the situation was and she increased interest rates massively. Mm. And that was at the time the right response in order to make sure that inflation was not going to go through the roof and in order to make sure that people who had invested in Russia, essentially Russians, would keep mm. the money in Russia. Mm. So she managed that very well in the early days. And as a result of that, inflation went up, but not very much, and went back down again. So she did a magnificent job. I have no, you know, no hesitation to say that. Mm. I do think that the sanctions are biting, not as much as we had expected, true. Mm -hmm. And I also think that the technological barriers that are, are, that are now imposed on Russia will also have an effect on their growth and on their business model. The problem with the energy prices, as I see it, and I'm not an energy expert, is that they still manage to sell a lot of their energy, whether it is oil or whether it is gas, to other countries than those countries that apply the sanctions and certainly outside of the European Union. When they sell to India, when they sell to China, when mm. they sell to the Far East, well, <laughs> they, they, they manage to get uh, currencies in, and I don't know whether they get renminbi, whether they get uh, rupees or what, but they certainly manage to sell and to bring money in. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, uh, how do you think the position of, e of the EU about uh, COP for 
oil price uh, for uh, for Russian oil. So will it help really? Are you are you talking about the sixty dollars cap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I think it it will help if it is properly implemented and enforced. Mm. Now, it I think that all the big insurance companies, all the the brokers, all the shipping companies uh, that are operating out of Europe, out of the United Kingdom, out of the United States, will respect the mm. uh, the, the the cap and will not provide insurance and will not provide shipping if prices are set higher than that. But mm -hmm. you and I know that uh, the Russians are very good at circumventing and, you know, moving around the sanctions. And the mm -hmm. fact that he has accumulated um, vessels, um, mm -hmm. you know, oil, oil tankers, and that mm. he's trying to set up some insurance, domestic insurance mechanism is mm -hmm. a way for him to try to circumvent uh, the sanctions that we have imposed. I, I think that yes. another problem is, is that they have uh, such a partner as Turkey. Mm -hmm. So they help them very, very, really much. And it's, it does not give us good uh, uh, success. So I think um, uh, how we could uh, we could make our sanction policy better. Well, any it's, it, it's something that political leaders have to think through. But any pressure that the U.S., the U.K., the European Union, um, the Australians, Canada, of course can put on all the other players will matter because in, in a system, if you have, you know, exit doors or back doors through which you can escape the main sanctions, of course, it weakens the system. So I don't know whether through, um, you know, through NATO, um, Turkey can be put under pressure, but that one, that's one avenue. Turkey is playing a funny game because, you know, by, by blocking or announcing that they will block Sweden and Finland, of course, mm -hmm. they put themselves in that good bargaining position. And it's difficult to put very much pressure on them when you ask them to vote for Sweden and Finland. Mm -hmm. But it's all the, you know, all the countries of goodwill, the coalition of the willing to support Ukraine that have to really put other other countries under pressure. There will be... You know, there will be a G20 in India coming up soon for the finance uh, ministers and the central bank governors. And I think it would be a good occasion to remind all the other G20 leaders of their duty for peace and their duty for stability. Because if they don't respect those rules, then stability uh, is an issue. I think that it's not a good uh, game for Turkey especially. And by the way, I just want to ask you, what is, how, how is your opinion? Who has a worse situation uh, among the EU countries now? Who had uh, suffered more? Yeah, if, if, I look at, uh, if I look at my inflation numbers, which is the barometer that I use, the countries that are closest to Russia, surprise, surprise, like the Baltic countries, mm -hmm. are taking a huge, big hit because they were trading partners, because there is a political risk that is associated with them. So they are the ones that have the worst uh, numbers. If you look at, you know, debt uh, to GDP, mm. a country like Greece is mm. at risk, but it's not a big risk because a lot of their uh, borrowing is with uh, quasi-official uh, institutions like the European Stability Mechanism. The other country that has a high debt to GDP is Italy, of course. So I'm, I'm also <laughs> worried. So you, it's a half of our loans is uh, uh, the U.S. loans and uh, half is 50 persons is this is uh, from Eurozone. So it's also mm -hmm. impact on uh, um, currency rates. And my question is, what is the maximum inflation uh, you see in Europe this year? Hmm. You know, every, everything has been a surprise 
uh, in terms of uh, economic projections, in terms of inflation. So it's it's hard for me to say, but the official projections that we have put inflation at around 7% for 23. I, I will have to double check the numbers because I think I'm, I'm giving you a number which is a bit on the low side. It's, it's probably a little mm-hmm. higher than that. At this time, I think it's uh, pretty hard to have uh, right forecasts. You know, that situation is uh, <laughs> going uh, unstable. So so do you think, is it possible to increase uh, uh, to increase um, rates uh, to four persons uh, for ECB? But that, that you In- know, I wish I could tell you. I wish I had a crystal ball to say that, but I... I I cannot um, say so for, you know, at this point in time. It's going to be a factor of impact of our action, Mm -hmm. level of inflation, scope. You know, does it apply only to energy? Is it food? Is it services? Is it, we have multiple ways to measure inflation. What I know Mm -hmm. is that it will, interest rates will continue to rise inevitably. Mm -hmm. But up mm-hmm. to what point, what will be the terminal rate? When will we reach the terminal rate? That I cannot tell you. I don't know. My, my, economist, no, I, my, yeah. economist, said, my economist said that in negative uh, forecast, interest rates uh, in ECB could reach 4%. As, as I told you, I, I do not have currently a terminal rate nor a time when we reach terminal Rate. The only thing I can tell you and the economists who are advising you, and I'm sure that they are as competent and as honest as my economist, is that it needs to go higher than where we are at the moment, because mm-hmm. otherwise we will not manage to tame inflation. And the question is, uh, how do you think, um, uh, what is your colleagues from uh, FIT uh, think about that? Do you mm-hmm. have a conversation with them? We not only, yeah, we do, of course, have conversations. We exchange a lot. And actually, I will be seeing uh, Jay Powell tonight. We have dinner tonight. Mm. Um, We have a meeting of the um, Bank of International Settlement in Basel, and I'm having dinner with him tonight. So, yes, we do talk a lot. But, you know, President, whatever is the coming out of this situation, who wins, who loses, in a way, is irrelevant. What matters is that Ukraine, at the end of the day, wins. Mm -hmm. So I take the the very simple view that those who have the biggest gun at the end of the day win, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very stupid, basic uh, Wild West cowboy principle. Mm -hmm. It is the Mm -hmm. case at the moment that the biggest military power in the world is the United States. So the mm-hmm. United States is supplying the biggest shipment of weapons, is mm-hmm. providing a very large amount of funding, and that's the reality that we deal with. And mm-hmm. I don't think that we can just um, argue about who wins, who loses. It's you who has to win, and we have to make every effort we can to support you. Okay, let, let's stop to talk about... Uh... Let's stop to talk about sad things. I'm really glad to see you, and I see you, uh, and I'm glad to see a smart, a smart woman at this position, and I think that you're pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm, I, have, well, I'm, I have a question I'm, about, yeah. I'm, I'm also a good um, user of uh, electronic money. So my question, uh, you're in- introducing the electronic euro, as I know. Yeah. So yeah. How, can I, um, how can switching to an electronic currency help? Well, two things. Number one, it will be decided in October. So we are preparing the ground. We want to be ready. Um, we want to be trained. But it will not be decided until October 23. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm... Um, personally convinced that we have to move ahead is a situation like the one we are in now. We are Mm -hmm. dependent on the supply of gas by a a very unfriendly country. Mm -hmm. I don't want Europe to be dependent on 
an unfriendly country's currency, for instance, I don't know, you know, the Chinese currency, the Russian currency, the mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. or dependent on a friendly currency, but which is activated by a private corporate entity like, you know, Facebook or like uh, Google or anybody like. That. I'm user of Bitcoin too. So I had bought it uh, when it started and uh, I, I hope that uh, it also will work in through the special system. And uh, I know there are many protests in Europe uh, against uh, the electronic euro. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the reason? You know, it's, it's the beauty of Europe. It has different uh, positions. If you ask in Northern Europe, for instance, uh, in the Netherlands, they're quite happy to see the e-euro coming. If you ask a young German um, man, he'll say, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. As I said, I don't want Meta, Google or Amazon to suddenly come up with a currency that would take over the sovereignty of Europe. I don't want a foreign currency to become the currency of trading within Europe. So we have to be ready. No, the problem is they don't want to be controlled. Uh, they don't want to... Uh... Yeah, but you know what? You know what? <laughs> now we have in Europe this threshold above 1,000 euros, you cannot pay cash. If you do, mm -hmm. you're on the grey market. So you take mm -hmm. your risk. You get caught, you are fined or you go in jail. But, you know, the, the, the digital euro is going to have a limited amount of control. There will be control. You're right. You're completely right. Mm -hmm. We are considering whether for very small amounts, you know, anything that is around 300, 400 euros, we could have a mechanism where there is zero control. But that could be dangerous. The terrorist attacks on France uh, back uh, 10 years ago were entirely financed by those very small anonymous credit cards that you can recharge in total anonymity. Mm -hmm. The uh, you know that the um, uh, question is now now I think that it's a joke like like a joke that uh, the next um, uh, currency will be firewood for Europe. Will be what? Firewood, firewood to hit to hit the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So it's like a joke. It's like a joke from uh, Russian side. That well, they we... can get lost. <laughs> and my question is, do you think that the policy uh, of previous authorities uh, with the IMF, I mean Poroshenko, led to a crisis? Because I got a many big, many uh, terrible uh, situation in economics when I became a president. So because uh, he... Uh, probably has uh, stole some um, some loans for Ukraine for his interests, and uh, we forced it to raise the pensions and tariffs for a long time, and it, it led to the critical situation. And Russia used it. Hmm. You know, I think first of all, I think the IMF did the best that it could do to help and support Ukraine. Um, you know as well as I do that the country was not in perfect shape. Uh, you know as well as I do that there were some, some very strange characters who abused the situation, who had their own militias, who had their own system that certainly took advantage of what was um, tried both by the IMF, by the United States, in order to help Ukraine. But, you know, you cannot rewrite history. And I think mm. that at the time, the loan by the IMF, the program that was initiated was necessary and had it not happened, would have been devastating for Ukraine. So was it 100% well implemented? Certainly not. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. I'm really Thank happy you to, to you. talk to you. Thank you. Have Same a great here. day with your colleagues. You too. Okay, thank you. Ravana Lexus.